Hey guys, back here with Tua for another video. Update, pup date, week 27. If you are new to this channel, I do this style video every Sunday as my bull mastiff puppy Tua turns a week older. And basically I just document my experience with the bull mastiff breed uh, week by week, not only for myself, but for any uh, potential bull mastiff owners that might have questions like I did myself going into getting a bull mastiff. Um, hopefully just have a good log of information for anybody interested in the breed about what to expect at very specific ages. Um, I've covered everything that he's gone through from training abilities to teeth loss to shedding, uh, dog acne last week, just pretty much anything you could think of. As I go through it week to week, I share my experience and uh, hopefully it answers a lot of questions for people interested in the breed. Um, I'll go, just go ahead and get right into the video then. Um, this week I did experiment with some more raw diet like I have been. Um, they were both items that he's had in the past. Uh, chicken feet and also chicken gizzards. And with those chicken feet, they are pretty big. I still don't trust him yet to take one on like whole. So I'll cut them up into smaller pieces. And uh, I've also been giving uh, raw to our miniature pincher, Roxy, also, who had never eaten raw before up until we got Tua. And she's reacted to it fine, the same as Tua has. So there's been no issues with raw whatsoever. And going into it, I was pretty, pretty hesitant, thinking that there may be. And there really hasn't been, guys. So if you haven't tried raw, go ahead and give it a try. And if you're new, basically what I've been doing with raw is just been supplementing it with this kibble. I haven't gone full on raw. I'll just add it to like the top is like a topper essentially, um, maybe 25% raw, 75% kibble, something along those lines. So uh, go ahead, give it a try. Or if you have any questions, ask me. I don't know as much as a lot of people do. I've just been experimenting with it myself. I'm still fairly new to it, but I feel like I'm getting a hang of it and I'm continuing to learn and do research on it. Another kind of funny or interesting thing from the week is uh, his tail is starting to become what I would consider a deadly weapon here. Um, uh, the dog that we had before Tua was a Doberman, so that he had his tail docked. And since, since then, um, the last dog I had with a tail was a Lab when I was a kid growing up. So we're not used to the tail, and as he's growing and getting taller... And when he's excited, that tail is really starting to whip um, our legs or whip our kids in the face. He actually spilt a drink this week that was on our coffee table. Uh, my wife had a glass of water sitting there. When he walked by, he got excited and started wagging his tail, and down goes the water. So uh, just something to keep in mind as, as your dog is getting older. He's about six months now, a little over. And uh, this is the first week that I'm really starting to notice that tail being extremely active. Um, we'll hear it like hitting walls and stuff too. If uh, we're coming up the stairs, he's laying in his bed and he gets excited. It's just dut, 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 dut on the wall. But it's got some power. And uh, I'd say in another six months, it's going to be even more intense. That tail is going to be a deadly weapon for sure. It's already turning into one. So kind of an interesting, funny thing. And then another thing that I just touched on last week, and I just want to hit on it one more time real quickly, is he's about six months old now, like I said. And if you have small kids, when they are in this puppy stage and they're bigger, um, just be very careful because they can knock your children to the ground, not in an aggressive way or anything. Tua has several times, like I said in, in last week's video, it's not a big deal. It's controlled, but I definitely wouldn't want like my kids running around on, say, like a concrete driveway with him while he's in play mode, puppy mode, because if he knocks them over and they hit their head, that could be a pretty big issue. But uh, if it's just in the grass, in the backyard, or, you know, inside on carpet or something like that, which every time he's knocked them down, that's been the case, it hasn't been a big deal. But he just gets really excited, doesn't realize how big he is, and... Uh, can knock those little kids to the ground when he's really in intense play mode. So now I'll just go ahead and get into uh, the main things that I touch on every week and update you guys on, starting with weight. He was 80 pounds last week. He just got weighed in. He's at 83 pounds now. So that's another three pound week. He's staying fairly consistent now on those two to three pound jumps. Um, I'd say it's been about four, five, six weeks now where it's been two to three pounds every week, where when he was younger, 
he was growing quicker. It was like a four to five pound gain every week. So the growth has slowed down just a little bit. Socialization this week, it was a really good week for it because we actually went out to my mom's uh, lake cabin and my little brother and his wife came into town and stayed out there and were visiting. So he was around two new people and he did really great with them. Uh, he's a great people dog, he loves people. And they actually have a new corgi puppy who I believe is 14 weeks or 15 weeks old. And Tua and that corgi puppy played a lot and uh, they kind of, for the most part, like the Corgi wanted to get away from him because he's such a big boy. But uh, they did have some pretty good play sessions. A lot of the time they were just under the deck for the most part, kind of just looking at each other. Um, he couldn't do too much with them because, you know, the size difference is so significant. But he did really good with them. No aggression at all with the, the little Corgi. Um, if anything, the Corgi had some aggression towards Tua, and Tua did not uh, kind of fight back or anything. He just wanted to play. So he has shown no signs of dog aggression at all um, to this point, or people aggression, really. And kind of a funny thing, too, we were at the lake for probably, I don't know, five hours, and, you know, new people, new smells, new sights, new sounds out there. He's walking around the yard. It's a pretty big yard. Um, when we got back, it was probably about 4.30 in the afternoon, and I just wanna, went ahead and fed him like right when we got home, and right after he ate and went to the bathroom, he came inside and collapsed on this bed and started snoring within about 30 seconds, and he was out for the night. Like, he got up to go to the bathroom one more time before we went to bed at probably, I don't know, 10, 10.30, but from the time we got home, after he ate, probably five o'clock, that was it. Lights out for the night. He was just dead. And it wasn't like he was doing a lot of like crazy running or anything, but I think it was just all the mental stimulation and seeing new people and the new dog and just the whole day. But it just wore him out. So he slept for, I guess, five o'clock till we woke up the next morning, basically at seven. So probably 14 hours of sleep. And, uh... We'll be going back out there, you know, quite a few times this summer. So it'll be interesting to see if he gets that gassed every single time we go out there. Um, as far as walks go this week, we only got him on like one because it's been insane heat here lately. Uh, we've had two days in a row now of over 100 and the other days have been mid to high 90s. So I got him out for one quick one and uh, it went really good, but there was nobody else out there. We didn't see anybody. Everybody's kind of staying inside now. Um crazy heat lately so and kind of related to that um, I touch on energy every week and he still had his moments this week where you know he'll get zoomies or something and the last few weeks I've been saying it's very up and very down but mostly up this week he had some up moments but I'd say it was mostly down and I'm thinking maybe that's kind of related to the heat because when he is outside he's tiring out more quickly and then he comes into the cool air-conditioned house and he just wants to relax. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm thinking. Because he, he's been pretty low energy this week. Like I said, other than a few random moments. But uh, So we'll, we'll see. It's going to be another hot one this week. So we'll, we'll see uh, if that stays consistent. Barking is also something I update you guys on every week. I've been saying that he pretty much is not a barker unless he's playing. Although, as of late, he'll start to bark at sounds and stuff that he can't really see what's going on. Last week, I think I said it, it seems like he's barking at things that are unknown. If he can't see it, then he's barking and kind of guarding. But it's not like he sits out in the yard and just barks and barks and barks like some dogs. It's uh, only at sounds or at things. And not for very long. Or if he's playing with a dog. I had mentioned that, uh, like, neighbor dogs and stuff... If they're like through the fence, he won't bark at them. He'll just kind of play with them. But this week he did actually let out a couple just little yips or yelps at them. Nothing crazy. They were barking at him. And just when, you know, they're on one side and he's on one side and they kind of are going back and forth is when it happened. And I actually got kind of a quick video of it. I'll show it here. Oh. 
So as you can see, I mean, it, nothing crazy, but that was the first time that I actually barked on a dog at the other side of the fence. So just something to make note of, I guess. Uh, the last thing that I touch on every single week is drooling. So he's a little over six months old and uh, he is not a drooler at all unless he's drinking water or eating food or waiting for food. But I will say this week it seems like the floodgates opened up even more when he's drinking his water. Um, I thought it couldn't really increase a whole lot more, but it is. After he drinks that water, that stuff is just pouring out of there, guys. And it's uh, it's very stringy, very long. But it's, it's not really a big deal because I know when it's going to happen. It's after he's drinking water. And I just have a paper towel ready and I just go ahead and take care of it. So to me, that's not a big deal, but lots of people are worried about bull mastiffs being droolers when they go into getting one. And uh, to, up to this point, in my experience, it's only been after he's been drinking water. So no big deal at all to me, at least. Um, that's pretty much it from the week, week 27. As usual, if there's anything else that you guys would like me to update you on week to week on what to expect on a bull mastiff, at least in my experience, go ahead and let me know. Otherwise, we'll do another one next Sunday, guys. Take care. Thanks for watching.